Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where you get information and facts from a know-nothing two-bit realtor, when you should be listening to Ken McElhaney and Peter Schiff. At least that's what I was told on a comment yesterday from a viewer. <laughs> I had to chuckle when I saw it. You probably didn't see it because YouTube flagged it. Um, he had some other salty words in there, and they put it in the held for review section. And I just kind of had to chuckle because, um, you know, first of all, he's right. You should listen to, to Ken and Peter Schiff and just about anybody else you want on, on YouTube. Find out what's going on. Um, and, you know, maybe you don't learn much from two-bit realtors like me. But I will say this. Um, Ken McElhaney has been predicting a crash in 2021 all year, and now he's telling you it's time to buy because inflation is coming. So even the smartest guys and the most successful guys in real estate aren't going to get it right every time. And uh, for the person that uh, said we should uh, listen to Peter Schiff, I think you should. Um, the guy's pretty smart. But if you're going to buy or list a house, uh, uh, good luck with uh, calling him and asking him to uh, write you a contract. So, hey, while you're there, push the like button, because when you do, it makes the lights flash in my office, and that's kind of cool. Um, but, oh, there we go. Thanks. Um, where are we at today? 7,545 homes on the market. Typical for a uh, midweek. A little bit of change, 4,324 homes came on the market with 3,771 going under contract. A difference of 553, we're still hanging in the fives with 1,746 price reductions. So that blue line's getting up there just a little bit this week and this one's kind of hanging, the number of homes going under contract kind of hanging right there. One of the things I did notice this morning is the homes uh, that are recorded as back on market are kind of starting to increase. They were anywhere around 700 to 750. And now this morning they were 920. So uh, that can mean a lot of things. I mean, people decided they weren't going to put their house on the market until the kids got back in school or for whatever reason, they put it on the market. It didn't sell. They took it off. But anyway, that number's going up. So who knows what that really means. But I wanted to talk today. Um, oh, Last night, I went to the Chandler Performing Arts Center and watched Clint Black. If you haven't seen a show in the Chandler Performing Arts Center, I suggest you go. I used to volunteer down there, help people uh, find their seats with my little flashlights, and it they've remodeled it. It's really a cool venue, and Clint Black performed last night, um, and he is fantastic. He says he's coming back in December with his wife, so I looked on the schedule. I didn't see that, but uh, get a chance, get down there. They have some pretty cool shows. I wanted to talk about inventory and uh, listing getting over, you know, homes getting over list price because we're seeing a, a little change. And we were seeing up here at the peak that 60% of the homes were going over list price, and now we're down to 47%. So that still means that over half the homes are, are being bid up, you know, over their list price. When you look at the price ranges where this is happening, predominantly, it's between 300,000 and 500,000. So you can see that past 30 days, 2,600 homes between three and four had 60% of them go over their list price. But then you scroll down and that price range three to four says $11,000 over list price. That was rocking about 20 to $25,000. But it's also different city by city. So let's take a look here and see what's going on in Chandler. And the reason I picked Chandler is because their inventory is really tight and they're building a new fab um, center down there at the uh, Intel, gonna bring in 3,000 more jobs. That's making things a little rough down there. So look, here in the uh, three to 400,000 range, 72% of the homes are going over list. Four to five, 56 are going over list. And they're a little higher, about 15,000 is the average of prices. And you get to uh, Fountain Hills, their inventory is very tight. And they are getting, let's see here, on average, between 500, 600,000, 33% of the homes, there's only eight homes between three and 400,000, 87% of those went over. Uh, but in the 1 million range, the average is 80 grand. Three to 400,000, they're only bidding them up around six. 
So it is slowing. One of the things to look at, if we look at closings over list month by month, and I want to pick all the cities. Historically, and when you look back, I mean, we are still in the stratosphere. So while I'm encouraged, we have a long way to go for bidding wars to subside, because you can see in 2019 or 2018, uh, we had, well, what's the percentage here? It doesn't give us a percentage, but the median list price difference was $3,000, not very much. We have a long way to go, but when you look at a chart, that is a significant decline. So don't be afraid, <clears throat> excuse me, to, to uh, put a bid on a house that isn't at the list price. But the only way you know that is have your agent call the other agent and say, what's the activity on the home? Now, we successfully got a home in the Scottsdale market over the weekend. I'm not going to tell you where it is or the price um, yet until it's closed. But uh, we got it significantly below the list price with no appraisal contingencies, and we're not waiving the inspection. It's a normal sale. We didn't even put any, you know, appraisal appraisal gap language in there, and we we got we got the contract. <clears throat> now, we found out before we wrote the contract that there were two other offers that came in that were kind of lowball, and they just out rejected them. So we said, well, let's <clears throat> excuse me, allergies are flaring back again. We said, well, let's let's go ahead and write what you want to write. I'll get a hold of the agent and say, hey, keep us in play here. Here's a, here's a good solid offer. Let us know what you think. Let's keep the dialogue going. I didn't want to come out and say, hey, if you don't like this, make sure you counter it higher. I didn't want to say that, but I certainly insinuated that, you know, if you don't like this, let's have a conversation and talk. And lo and behold, if they didn't accept it. So it can happen, and that's why I say keep swinging your bats. Now, that was in the price range between seven and 800000 and uh, it's a rare gem that we found. Um, you're probably not going to see a lot of that in Chandler and Gilbert right now. It's going to take a while, but we are seeing a trend now. We're seeing listings starting to come up now in, uh, in October, but man, it's so slow. KCH says, finally got an offer accepted at list. What helped me was to wait for something that stayed on the market for a week. It was overpriced. You know, that's exactly where this home was, nine days. Nine days, it sat on the market. And, you know, who'd have thought that you'd look at a real estate listing and go, wow, it's been on the market a week. That, that thing's overpriced. But there are a lot of people shooting for the moon right now. So you, you may see them price at 800,000 and get it for 780 and it's probably only worth 780 right now but they were asking 800,000 so be on the lookout for those types of listings i also saw um, a condo and we wrote an offer on a condo get this wrote an offer on a condo we offered them full price which was 220 and when i looked at the comps there was nothing going over 220 in this complex in the past month um, somebody was asking 223 and it was kind of Kind of sitting there. So I offered him $220. I got a counter offer back at $235, $15,000 more. And I, I called the guy and I go, You countered fifteen k higher? He goes, Well, yeah, we got a couple other offers. So they countered everybody at $235. And he didn't fill out the proper form that says, you know, that we have received multiple offers. He just put in there that, you know, if you accept this counter, it's not an active contract until the seller accepts it. I thought it was odd. It was kind of a shortcut. Um, uh, to be honest, the guy was kind of snarky. And uh, so we went ahead and countered at 225 and and I had to beg him for information two days later to find out that, oh no, they accepted another offer. Didn't bother to let us know, just had to call him and find out what was going on. So um, there are some odd ones out there and it had been on the market only one day. So. Uh, good for you, KCH, for finding that. And you kept swinging the bat, so way to go. Um, there's some other stuff going on out in the East Valley. I ran across this this morning. Developers get unanimous approval on a giant master plan community in East Valley. And they aren't kidding when they use the word giant. They said Apache Junction City Council unanimously approved the development of a master plan community that will pave the way for 10,000 new homes way out in the East Valley. I do like the views out there in Apache Junction, uh, but wow, 10,000 homes. Um, 
Last November, the state land development put out a bid on 2,783 acres of that area with the stipulation that the auction winner would be required to entitle another 5,300 acres of adjacent land owned by the state land department to pave the way for future development. So here came D.R. Horton and Brookfield and they won the bid, paying 245.5 million for that property. So now all they have to do is um, try to get lumber. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty rough out there for these builders, so they're not getting their materials. But there is some building starting to pick up going on out there. Um, so 10,000 homes, a lot of homes. That's going to take them a while. It's probably going to be two and a half years before you see anything get finished out there. So, hey, take on the day. Have a terrific time. Don't forget to smash that like button and make my lights flicker. Take care.